Hi everyone, I'm Jim White, and uh, this video is about current transformers. And uh, current transformers are used at uh, 50, 60 hertz line frequency. And uh, there's also RF current transformers. I'm going to show you how to make one for 50, 60 hertz and how to make one that will work up to 30 megahertz. And uh, the RF current transformer can be used to measure, for instance, the current around a magnetic loop antenna. Is that uh, current uniform? Is it the same everywhere in the mag loop? Well, if you have a current transformer, you can find out. Also, there's a lot of controversy as to whether you need a uh, choke ballon at the feed point of a dipole antenna. Well, with a current transformer, uh, you can find out. And I'll be covering the high frequency stuff in another video, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. So what's the difference between a current transformer and any other transformer? Well, the short answer is there is no difference. Uh, the only thing about it is the way it is used. And uh, that seems to be uh, misunderstood by a lot of people that really already understand transformers. So uh, let's get into the details of uh, how you make and use a current transformer. Now, some time ago, I made a video called uh, Transformer Secrets. And uh, if you're not totally familiar with how transformers actually work, I suggest you watch that video uh, before getting into this one. Uh, there's some terminology and some things used in that video that you'll need to really understand what's going on in this video. So give that a look. There's a link to that video in the description below. Okay, here we have a, uh, a normal transformer. In this case, let's say it has a rating of 10 volt amps. And uh, let's assume there's a thousand turns on the primary and a thousand turns on the secondary. So for 10 volt amps, if we apply 100 volts to the primary, uh, at full load we'll get a tenth of an amp. So out here we have a 100 volts on the secondary, and to get 0.1 amps, uh, we would need a load of 1,000 ohms, 1 kilo ohm. And the primary, looking into the primary of the transformer, we would see that 1K because the turns ratio is 1 to 1. So here R equals 100 volts divided by 0.1 amps, which is 1K. Now let's modify this transformer by stripping all the turns off and just putting a single turn on the primary. Let's keep our 1K on load. So we'll still have 100 volts and 0.1 amps uh, flowing through the resistor. So, uh, by the way, we're dissipating 10 watts in the 1K ohm resistor. Well, what do we see on the uh, primary? Well, if we go a 1,000 to 1 turns ratio, we're going to go from a tenth of an amp to 100 amps and from 100 volts to a tenth of a volt. So the resistance seen looking into the primary is now uh, 1 milliohm. So it, it turns out the impedance that you see is the square of the turns ratio. So there's a uh, 1,000 to 1 turns ratio, you square that and uh, you get a million. And if we look at the difference between 1K ohm and 1 milli ohm, the difference is a million. So, uh, 
Now let's hook this transformer up to an actual uh, way we would normally use it. And uh, I'll show you that next. Okay, here we've taken a 100 volt source and uh, this would be like our line voltage input. Uh, we're just using 100 volts to keep everything nice round numbers. But uh, let's say we had a 10 kilowatt motor that had a 100 volt rating. So we're going to apply 100 volts to that at full load. Uh, we'll get our 100 amps. So here's the transformer that we saw a moment ago with our single turn. So there's 100 amps flowing through that single turn and that means we have a tenth of an amp out here. So we'd have 100 volts across our 1k ohm resistor. Now what would happen if we short this secondary out. In other words, take the 1k ohms to 0 ohms. Well, our, our primary circuit uh, could care less. We would go from uh, 0.1 volts across that one turn winding to essentially 0 volts, uh, depending on the resistance of the actual piece of wire. And our, to our primary circuit, that's like a uh, tenth of a percent change in voltage. So it could care less. It keeps running along happily. But if we have 100 amps flowing in our primary, even with the secondary shorted out, we'll get the 100 milliamps. But now, it's at zero volts. So we could put a meter in this circuit and at 100 amps that meter would show 100 milliamps. And of course if the load on the motor went down that current would go down. Now we, we can either use a current meter to monitor the, the secondary current, or we can put a resistor there and measure the voltage. But we don't need a 1000 ohm resistor. That was dissipating 10 watts. A 100 ohm resistor would still see the 100 milliamps, but it would dissipate a lot less power. So we could even go down to a 1 ohm resistor and look for a very low voltage across it, which would be proportional to the motor current. So this is how a current transformer is used. It's just an ordinary transformer. Uh, sometimes they're made from a toroid, and that's for convenience. We have our secondary winding, and our primary winding is just a single wire going through it. So next, let's take a little standard uh, transformer and make it into a current transformer. Okay, here we have uh, two small transformers. They're rated at 12 volt amps, and the secondary voltage is uh, 16 volts, which doesn't matter because we're going to rip the secondary out anyway. So if we look at this one, well, let's look at this one, full one first. The primary winding is on the uh, bottom of the split bobbin, and the secondary winding is on the top. The secondary winding on this transformer is center tapped, is why there's three tabs there. Now this is the same transformer with the secondary removed. So uh, you can just slice here with a sharp knife and start peeling till you get the uh, secondary off. 
and now we have a, a window that we can pass a wire through uh, for the current carrying conductor uh, where we want to measure the current. So this is now a current transformer. I wanted to uh, find out how many turns are on the primary of our small transformer. So I put 10 turns through our window here and with 120 volts applied to the 10 turns uh, we get 1.047 volts. So that's around 0.1 volts per turn. So the 120 volts divided by that tells us roughly uh, 1100 turns on the primary. Okay, here's a uh, setup for demonstrating uh, the operation of our current transformer. Here's a, a 20 amp variac which feeds this outlet box here and I have two electric heaters plugged into that outlet box. Now the neutral wire of the incoming cord goes to these outer two terminals. So I can have a loop of wire out here that is actually conducting the current to these outlets. And that wire then I can pass through our current transformer to show how it works. Okay, we have our current conductor passing through the window of our transformer and it goes over to this meter which is set on the 10 amps AC scale and then comes back to the uh, other terminal. And the second meter here is set to AC volts and that's connected to the secondary, what is now the secondary of our transformer. Originally that was the primary. So let's pass some current through the transformer. I'll turn on the variac and we'll set the current to 5 amps. Okay, there's roughly 5 amps and we're seeing 51 volts on that secondary. Uh, that's getting uh, a little high, but let's go to 10 amps. Okay, there's 10 amps and we're up to uh, 78 volts on that secondary. So if uh, So you can see uh, this could be dangerous. Uh, at higher currents you're going to get uh, higher voltages and it could get up to 120 volts before the core saturates. So uh, let's uh, change our primary winding here. Uh, with this kind of a transformer you can actually get a half a turn. So uh, let me show you what a half a turn looks like. Okay, by passing the wire only through one of the openings, we essentially have a half turn primary. And uh, let's go to uh, 10 amps again. little hard to adjust. Okay, there's essentially 10 amps and this time we're only at 40 volts and if we let's go up to 20 amps and we've only gone up to 49.9 volts so the core is now saturating so we'll never be able to uh, exceed that voltage by very much. So we don't want to go to a larger transformer uh, because uh, it could put out uh, dangerous voltages. 
Now instead of putting a voltmeter on the secondary, let's uh, change the meter to AC milliamps. There's the 300 milliamp scale AC milliamps. Okay, now let's uh, go back up to 10 amps. Okay, there's 10 amps, and we're at 4.45 milliamps. And if we go down to 10 amps, or 5 amps, I mean, rather hard to adjust and there we have about half of our previous reading so we have as we adjust our current up and down we have a milliamp reading that tracks with the primary current and that is basically how a current transformer works Okay, previously we estimated our primary turns by measuring the voltage across 10 turns and then calculating the ratio of the voltages and we got 1146 turns. Now we just passed 10 amps through a one half turn primary and got 4.45 milliamps on the secondary and that's a current ratio which would also be a turns ratio of uh, 2247. Now because that's a half a turn if we divide that by two we come up with a secondary turns of 1124 and that pretty much matches what we measured using that method. So this half turn uh, thing is valid. So I hope you uh, liked our explanation of how current transformers work. And uh, be sure and subscribe if you want to see what uh, goes on for a 30 megahertz current transformer. If uh, you got anything out of that video, uh, you could help me by clicking that uh, like button. And if you don't want to miss the uh, next video be sure and subscribe and in the meantime you could watch these two videos